ladies, we had to talk the four phases. Stranger sexual assault. Someone that you've never met before, surprises you behind the bush, from the alley, someone you've never met before. And although these are the kind of attacks that we fear the most because we see them in the news and we hear about them most often, these actually aren't the most common. The most common sexual assaults are by those that we know. These non are non-strangers. Which mean acquaintances, friends, sometimes even family members, co-workers, colleagues, non-stranger. And when it's a non-stranger sexual assault, there are actually three phases, totally unique, totally different than what we're used to with the usually highly publicized and uh, you know, very, uh, very lots of media attention surrounding the stranger sexual assaults. You don't hear about the non-stranger sexual assaults as much, and uh, and sadly, that has led you know many of the of the survivors of uh, of non-stranger sexual assaults to not really know that what happened to them really is categorized, you know, in every sense as a sexual assault or a rape. As Henner said, these non-stranger attacks have three totally different phases than the four phases we talked about before. And uh, with these different offensive strategies, of course, there are different defensive strategies. That's why it's so important to know these three phases. Phase one, intrusion. Phase two, desensitization. And phase three, isolation. Talk about phase one, the intrusion. Intrusion is basically testing your boundaries. Okay, this is where they kind of see how you react to things that they say. So they may be testing your, your boundaries verbally, right. physically, even sexually. During the intrusion phase, they're going to make intrusive remarks or gestures to really see whether you're going to defend against them, what you're going to allow to happen, basically how, you know, how defensive you are or how dismissive you are to their remarks. Because what happens is, they'll, as long as they can, they'll keep making these intrusive behaviors or remarks. And ultimately what happens is if those continue, prolonged period of time. And you allow them to continue. That's when the desensitization takes place. Suddenly what happens is you become kind of dismissive. Okay, what he's saying, he's joking. You kind of, you know, blow it off. Absolutely. So during this desensitization stage, he kind of can make a joke out of this or make it seem like maybe you're overreacting or you're being uptight. All of a sudden, these boundaries that you've set before, all of a sudden don't seem like boundaries anymore and the lines become a little bit fuzzy. And then of course, once you're desensitized, once ultimately you have been desensitized to his intrusive remarks, all it takes is isolation. If he can then isolate you from the crowd or from the group or from the scenario and he gets you away from the crowd, ultimately at that point he can continue you know, crossing more and more boundaries to the point where the sexual assault has been committed. So incredibly important that, uh, that, you, that you recognize front and center as early as possible what his intentions are. Yeah, and it's also important to understand the different kinds of violence that non-strangers use because they don't use the kind of extreme violence that we discovered with, with the actually physical techniques that we learned. Traditionally, with, with non-stranger sexual assaults, they use what is called instrumental violence versus the gratuitous extreme violence you see in, in stranger assaults. Gr instrumental violence, what that is, is it's when the, the attacker's level of violence is in proportion to the, uh, the target's level of resistance. So, you resist. so, so if the target is not resisting, then there's no violence needed. And he would love that. He loves the path of least resistance. So the sooner and the more, the more aggressively and the more effectively you set those barriers and, and, you, and you put up you know, your defense mechanisms, obviously the more challenging his attack is going to be because it's, uh, he certainly doesn't want the fight. He wants to be as easy as possible, which is why in most, large majority of non-stranger sexual assaults, there is a drug or alcohol mm. being used, and alcohol ultimately being the drug of choice for, uh, for non-stranger sexual assaults. Why? Two reasons. Right. Number one, the alcohol really speeds up the desensitization phase. Yeah, meaning all lines are blurred. You don't really know what's going on. You kind of let just things happen and just whatever go on. And, and yeah, it's like, you, you know, he can say whatever he wants. And like, oh, whatever. You, you become much less sensitive to, to the potency and, and the real significance of his intrusive remarks or behaviors. Not only that, but you're actually not able to even defend yourself. Right. Absolutely, yeah. And, and so the alcohol really makes you defenseless, you know, especially if you have too much. And... Uh, and then suddenly the attack is so possible, your defense mechanisms are completely you know, neutralized, and then and, and there he goes. You know? Also, ladies, all these techniques that we've learned, these physical techniques that have empowered us so much, I guarantee you, I mean, I don't drink, and I know Henry doesn't either, but being intoxicated, right. you're pretty much useless. 
Absolutely. Henry's a black belt, but if he was intoxicated, he, I could probably beat him up. I'd be a white belt. <laughs> Again, I don't want to start over. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the defensive measures. Of course, awareness. But even more specific, awareness, of course, is a very general term. Be stranger or non-stranger, right? But really, when it comes to non-strangers, it's all about setting boundaries. Absolutely. And, and for women, what that means is not waiting till you're actually at that moment and trying to set up boundaries as far as, okay, this feels uncomfortable. Because in the moment, I guarantee you, that's when the lines become blurred, especially during this desensitization process. So what we need to do as women is sit down. And whether, you know, if you have a mom or a sister, sit down with each other even and talk about what are the boundaries that we're setting for ourselves. And know those ahead of time so that when they happen, you already know that a boundary has been crossed. Absolutely. So even for me, if it's, you know, if I know that I am will never be in a room with another man that I don't know or that I don't know well, right. if that ever happens, I know a boundary has been crossed. And, and not when I get there and say, oh, well, he seems like a nice enough man. And, sure. you know, you start thinking and making excuses for yourself and with the help of this other man who's kind of talking you into this situation. And there are some very proven, effective, and reliable um, strategies, verbal kind of assertiveness or verbal self-defense strategies, as some may call it, uh, one of them being the three-part statement. Basically, if someone is saying or doing something mm -hmm. that, is, that is making you uncomfortable, the first thing you want to do is, is, is state the behavior. Clear, cut, dry, you know? And then once you state the behavior, you want to state how that's mm -hmm. making you feel, and then you want to basically make very clear what you would like to take place, what action you would like to see. So uh, you can give us an example of that. Yeah, so the first thing, when you touch me like that, it makes me uncomfortable. I'd like you to leave me alone. Right, and you can see that when she delivers it, you know, she's, you know, makes good eye contact. There's no, she's not being sarcastic. She's not joking about it. It's very clear. There's no misinterpretation in terms of, you know, in terms of, you know, what her intentions and her feelings are about the situation. Right. When, so, yeah, anything, and no matter what the behavior is, even if it's a guy offering you another beer and, and you're, you've told him a million times, no, you don't want a drink, you know, when, you, when you keep trying to force alcohol on me, it makes me feel disrespected. So right. I'd like you to stop offering me beer and leave me alone. Absolutely. So okay. there you have it. Now, sometimes they won't respect the first time you say it. They're going to try to kind of blow it aside and say, hey, come on, I'm just messing around. Guess what? Use the broken record strategy. Say Keep it again, it. again. And each time you have to say it again, guess what? You know, raise that intensity a little bit so he realizes that you're not messing around. And then finally, we have to discuss the conversational web. Very common tactic used by guys. Ladies, we've all been stuck in the conversational web. Okay, this is when basically men just kind of talk around in circles. And yeah. all of a sudden, what you've said, somehow they turn around on you and all of a sudden you start believing what they're saying. And I mean, it's important to be able to identify when this happens because this is part of those initial phases of a man kind of trying to get you to lower your boundaries. So if you set a barrier, he's certainly going to, you know, of course try to get around the barrier. You just say, no, come on, what are you talking about? Yeah, just one I, more I drink. I Haven't you ever had a drink beer. in your life? Haven't you ever had a drink when you're younger? Well, well yeah, I, I had a drink Okay, before, but, yeah. so you'll see that he will mm -hmm. totally like, you'll set a barrier and he'll totally turn it around and kind of say, oh, like that's not what I meant. And then he'll try to bring you in and tie you in a different way. Very dangerous, 100%. Be aware. And with these verbal strategies, just like the physical strategies that, we, that we've taught, they have to be done with conviction. It's the same thing. They're just yeah. as important. So yeah. when I say them, notice I didn't say, when you touch me, it makes me feel uncomfortable. Please leave me alone. Right. You know, you have to be very assertive. You have to have some conviction. Otherwise, Help they're not going to believe you. And luckily, with the techniques that you've learned, hopefully that will give you the confidence to be able to say these things you know, and, and mean that Absolutely. with conviction. Which is part of the reason why we didn't want to have this talk before you learn the techniques. You know, now that you have 15 lessons and you're, you know, well empowered in the physical form, we understand that you can certainly deliver these lines and, and, and establish your barriers with more confidence and certain that you can defend yourself if he does cross those lines. One thing is certain, the sooner you set the barrier, the easier it is to enforce. Yeah, the qu a good question is, when can I actually use the techniques that I've learned in right. a non-stranger attack. Right. And I guess the answer would be as soon as the boundaries that you've set are crossed, are crossed just like Henner said, you're Absolutely. able to use those techniques, if even if it's just a, an escape. Or yeah. A, and if it goes, if he, you set a verbal barrier, he crosses it once, you set it again, he crosses it again. Don't hesitate. Get physical, you know, and don't be embarrassed. If you have to actually push, shove, or create distance, or break out of a room, or slap someone in the face, don't be embarrassed. Let him be embarrassed for being the person that provoked this 
physical behavior from you. Obviously, he's a weirdo who's doing things that he shouldn't be doing. Put it on him 100%, but draw your lines early. Think about this. You plant a little seed in the ground. A little tree's gonna grow. Much easier to pluck that little seedling out of the ground and prevent the tree from ever existing than to let the tree grow strong and then try to chop it down. What that means is the longer you wait to really set the strong barrier, let's say you dismiss his initial remarks, you let it slide, everything's okay, suddenly now you find yourself in the room with this guy who you've never met before, or maybe you have met before, but you dismiss so many comments that now you find yourself in a, in a, in a, deep, you know, in a deep situation there, you know, it's gonna be harder. Now, not that you can't defend and not that you shouldn't try, go for it, but just know that you know, it would have been much easier if you set that verbal and that firm barrier way up front because you know, then you know if he crosses it, he has bad intentions. Of course. And ladies, make no mistake, no matter what point you're at, nothing that you did, nothing that you said, nothing that you wore, and nothing that you drank made you ask to be sexually assaulted. And no matter what, you have to remember that. And you always have the right to set those boundaries even if it feels like it's too late. You set those boundaries and you stick to them and uh, whatever physical defense you may need, you can use. Ladies, only 15% of rapes are actually reported. And we believe this is largely due to the fact that 85% of the 85% uh, of the women who get attacked either think it's their fault, which it never is, or they don't even recognize what happened to them as a rape. Mm. Because it happened in such a non-violent, such a kind of a instrumentally violent and, and, and kind of coercive, tricky way by this non-stranger. Ladies. Yeah, these, these are undercover predators. They're the they're the worst. Listen to this. Quick story. Two people want to poison you. One of them sneaks up on you, hits you in the head with a baseball bat, and then injects you with some poison. The other one takes you to a beautiful restaurant, waits till you look away, pours a little bit of poison in your drink when you're looking away, and poison you just the same poison. He just went about it way more, way more sneakily. Guess what? They're both equally same guilty. Same result. Non-strangers are undercover rapists. Don't get it wrong. Don't be naive and be aware and defend them with the same conviction focus, rigor, and, and intensity that you would any predator who tried to sneak up on you while at the park or you know in an alley or any other situation. They're all the same. Most importantly, set your boundaries. Okay, sit down, set them for yourself so that you know when these non-stranger attacks come, where your boundaries are, and uh, how, to, how to hold strong to them. 100%, ladies, stay focused and stay safe.